what's up everybody true boxing here thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth so today i'm going to continue my 2021 year end top tens as we look at my number six middleweight in the world right now the undefeated Janabak alam kanuli kazakh style who came out of nowhere in 2021 he was an undefeated prospect from kazakhstan but outside of his nickname he really hadn't beaten anybody big and was really untested well and um in 2021 he would pass the test in june he would take on former secondary champion rob brand in a um in a contender's bout brand came in the favorite and kazakh style went in there and dominated rob brand he just beat him up pressed him and dominated him until finally stopping him in the ninth round as he scored the biggest victory of his career to remain undefeated and push forward towards uh, towards bigger things. And uh, as he was trying to stay busy and set himself up, he would take on former two-time champion Hassan Nadam, which I don't think anybody believed Nadam was going to beat um, Alam Kanuli, but when if you're really on an elite level at middleweight, you beat an older fighter like Hassan Nadam, you, you beat him up, you dominate him. And he went in there and dominated Hassan Nadam as well, put him down and stopped him in the eighth round of that fight, remaining undefeated. Then, right after that, he lobbied the WBO to rank him ahead of Jaime Minguia, because Minguia wasn't cashing in on his mandatory, to let him be the mandatory number one contender for undefeated WBO champion Demetrius Andre. He actually wanted and still wants to fight Demetrius Andre. So before the end of the year, the WBO accepted that. They said, okay, you are the mandatory. And now these two guys could be on a collision course. Now, before I get into that whole story, let's look at his stats now, which are pretty solid. He wasn't ranked coming into this, so he's brand new to the top 10, and he's at number six. That's pretty good. He's 28 years old, which is, you know, he's young. He's in his, uh, he's entering the prime of his career right here in terms of his physical prime. He is 11 and 0 with, um, I believe, seven knockouts. And officially, he's a WBO's number two contender. Uh, now, uh, Jaime Minguia is number one, but it's irrelevant because he's made it clear that he's likely going after the WBC title. So that uh, allows Alam Kanuli to jump over him and challenge Boo Boo Andrade this year. But Andrade's got to want the fight. Now there's a purse bid that's going into play Saturday, January 15th, which is coming up. That's actually two days away as it's, as I'm doing this video. Um, there's, there's that that's going to happen. Um, if Minguia uh, fails to, uh, I mean, if uh, Andre doesn't um, participate in that, the fight's going to be forced, and he has a, he has an option here. He has a, an opportunity. He can move up. Andre can move up and wait, but what kind of message does that send? He says he wants to move up and wait for bigger fights and to chase down Canelo Alvarez, but here's a kicker. The governing body, the WBO, and none of the governing bodies at 168 since Canelo became undisputed in November are mandating Canelo to fight anybody because they want him to be their champion. So they're going to hold on to him as their champion as long as they can. Andre can, can move up and wait and become the mandatory number one contender. Of course he can. But Canelo's not going to fight him. Canelo has no interest in fighting Andre because Andre doesn't have a big name. So Canelo is going to laugh at that and even if the WBO puts the, his feet to the fire, he'll just vacate the title. And then Andre's going to have to fight like a Zach Parker, who's an undefeated super middleweight and a bigger guy. Excuse me. Why not stay here, at least for now, and take on an undefeated Kazakh, Kazakh, uh, Kazakhstan fighter who we all know Triple G's from Kazakhstan. Why not stay here and fight him? and see if he can, you know, uh, and, and, and take a chance against a guy who actually wants to fight him. That's the thing. Uh, Alan McAnuli didn't get forced into this fight, and he's a legitimate undefeated contender on the rise. 
if Andre goes forward with his mandatory, I think it'll be looked at as, hey, he had balls and he took on uh, even a feared mandatory right here in Alan McCannulli. But Kazakh style has a big opportunity. He's either gonna fight him or he'll fight the next available contender for the title, but he's getting a title shot next. That's gonna happen. And to be honest, I think he's gonna, I think if Andre passes on him, which I think right now it's about 50-50, if Andre passes on him, I think Kazakh style captures the WBO title for sure and <laughs> pushes forward towards bigger things in 20, uh, 2022, the second half of 2022 entering 2023. I think he he really pushes forward towards bigger things and, and has opportunities awaiting for him. So, um, and if the fight goes forward with Andre, I think he's got an, a big opportunity to score an upset. I do. I think he's a very good fighter. And I can't wait to see the scenario and what happens with this. So hopefully the purse bid gives us some kind of glimpse of what's going to happen. Hopefully Andre makes a decision. And we know sooner rather than later. But Kazakh style has, again, set himself up very nicely uh, to get a title shot next, which, he's, which is going to happen. And to fight the best at 160 pounds middleweight after after a great year and his career best victory over Rob Brandt in June of 2021. So we'll see what happens, but that's the 2021 year-end top 10s continuing with my number six middleweight in the world right now, the undefeated Kazakh style, Janabek Alamakanuli. I hope you guys enjoyed this. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.